So this is my uh, 1988 Ford Bronco 2, uh, the sequel to the Ford Bronco, I guess. And uh, I'm making this video because, well, it's been close, I'm going to say right around a year and a half I've been driving it and owning it a little bit. Well, actually, I've been owning it for probably two years now. I've sat in the backyard for a while. The odometer says that I've put about 10,000 miles on it, and that's probably about right because um, I drive this thing back and forth to college every weekend. Uh, this is my daily driver. Uh, it's kind of, it's bit me in the rear end a couple times, but it's not been all that bad. It's never stranded me. Of course, now that I'm in the middle of the woods. Uh, actually, I don't even know where I'm at. Because um, there's a road. There's a campfire. You know, there's a tree. Uh, so let's stop talking about it stranding me while I'm out here. So yeah, uh, I figured I'd just make a video because, man, I just, I like talking. Uh, for some reason and I don't know it'd probably be nice for some people to uh, hear from someone with experience with one of these before you buy one uh, I'm just gonna go and say I love this thing um, but there is a certain criteria that you have to meet to uh, daily drive one of these so uh, yeah but of course I show up a little bit later than I wanted to and the Sun is right there but that's all right from here it looks pretty rust free but uh, if it was rust free I probably wouldn't have bought it because it wouldn't have been that cheap. I paid about 400 bucks for it. Uh, I've done a whole series. I'm going to get out of the sun because it's hurting me as, it, as, as much as it looks bad on the camera. There we go. Um, I've done a whole build series on this on my channel. Um, there's a whole playlist. i will probably link somewhere. So I'm just going to get right into it on if you should buy one of these, because that's probably what I'm going to name the video, like something like, should you buy a Bronco 2? Um, so start out with the obvious. Uh, the looks, it looks super cool. Um, you d they're not going to make another vehicle that looks like this, but that could be said for anything from the 80s. So uh, just the boxiness. Uh, I mentioned Rust a while ago. This one is, it's not too bad. It's doing it in all the right spots, you know, um, but bottom of the store is kind of entertaining because it, it's pretty bad. You know, that's fine. Don't even look there. Um, doing it good on this fender right here. And it was doing it pretty good in this cap corner, as in the cap corner just wasn't there. There's a car going on the road, so if I die, there's probably some over here. Okay. Um. Uh, I replaced this cab corner because that was the worst spot in the truck. Uh, I did a whole video on that if you're interested. And it's happening back here too. Uh, honestly, I don't really know where these things rust out. I can only show you where mine's rusting out. And I would say check the cab corners and the front fenders. Uh, that's going to be, that's the worst spot on mine. So at the college I'm going to, uh, it snows a lot here. And they dump a lot of salt on the road, so uh, it's going to get rusty anyways. I'd much rather it be rusty before I make it rusty, if that makes sense. So I don't care if this is perfect, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I think that's really where this truck thrives, is if you're expecting it to be perfect, if you're expecting any of these trucks to be perfect, you better just not get one, because they're not going to be. But this thing's got some characteristics and stuff that make it both fun and not fun to drive but you know the fun characteristics outweigh the uh not fun let's go over ride quality it's a four wheel drive from the 80s it's honestly not bad but it's not it's not a lincoln town car uh i've never ridden one of those but my dad says they ride like no other car um so don't expect it to be too good but it's it's honestly not that bad um, this thing could probably stand some different shocks because um, I don't know if they're any good. Actually, we can test that right here. Oh, they're decent. So on the note of suspension, this thing is very floaty uh, going around town. Uh, like it's just constantly doing that basically uh, because that's just the suspension is somehow soft but rock hard at the same time. I don't know how they did it, but you gotta give it props. Um, so, Cause when you're taking off, the truck does that, and then you push the clutch and shift, and then it just does that. And you know, uh, if you don't know how to drive this thing smooth, this thing looks goofy driving down the road uh, because it is just 
floaty as everything. Um, and you would think that would mean it takes a bump pretty good. It doesn't. I don't. I don't understand how they did that. But, anyways, interior on these things, they're not bad. Oh goodness, what's happening here? They're not bad. Uh, that door panel actually looks pretty good. Uh, the seat. Don't look at this seat because this isn't a factory seat. This is something the guy before me put in. I don't know what it's out of. He said it's like a Toyota Toyota MR2 because uh, he wanted a high back seat, and I guess he got that. But the factory one is the passenger side, and that one sits pretty good. Um, but I just cover them both in this blanket material because I hated the fact that they didn't match. This one's like a gray, you know. Uh, steering wheel is like most Ford steering wheels. They're hideous. I don't know. Uh, but I kind of like it. Uh, mine's, a, mine's a straight gear like you see. Uh, it shifts pretty good. Second gear was doing this weird thing where it didn't want to go in second gear for a while, but it stopped doing that. Uh, so it fixed itself. Uh, this is a four-wheel drive. I've got, I have the unfortunate, uh, news of, I guess, having that. Um, instead of it having the, you know, like the lever right here has this. Uh, but it does work, surprisingly. I had to put a new motor on the transmission. Because all it is is basically like a little windshield wiper motor that like, turns a little knob and stuff. Uh, none of these lights work or anything. You just got to know when it's doing its thing. Uh, so think of it like a, a clock. And like 12 o'clock is in, I guess, two-wheel drive high. And then, I don't know, like uh, four to five o'clock is just four-wheel drive. And then seven to eight o'clock is low range. So you got to go from four wheel drive. So if you're in two wheel drive, like I am right now, got to go in two wheel drive to four wheel drive and then low range, you just can't go to straight to low range. At least mine doesn't do that. I don't know. I don't know if that's common or what. Uh, Cause I don't think mine works right, but it's the same premise uh, to get back to two wheel drive, you go low range first and then four wheel drive off. And then, you know, you're in two wheel drive. Um, it's kind of finicky, but it does work. Uh, here's the gauges, you know, they're gauges. Um, my radio does work. Uh, cassette works because, you know, I've got my cassettes over there. Um, it sounds pretty good too. Uh, my clock done went out, I don't know, a while ago. And I only have AM radio, which is just about useless because I don't know why, but I don't get any FM channels anymore. So I could probably stand a different radio at some point. But, um, I don't know if you're going to buy one of these trucks. You're probably not going to keep the stock radio. I wanted it to keep cassettes in here. That's the only reason. Um, down here, this isn't factory. This is something I bought at like one of those Amazon return stores. Um, I just I wanted cup holders, uh, so I painted it red and self-tapped it to the floor. Uh, you do get map pockets in this thing, which is a thing of the past. I use it to keep a half inch nine sixteenth combination wrench because you can take this whole thing apart with that. Um, got my CB right there. That's out of my dad's old, I want to say Vega. I don't remember what car. Uh, I do have a CV antenna on the back that you probably saw, but, uh, some would call me a poser because there was not an antenna around. I call me cheap because just of how much they want for a CB antenna wire nowadays. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to use it anyways, but it looks cool. In the back, you got a seat with actually a surprisingly amount of leg room. Uh, I've sat back here before, not like going down the road. I just sat back here for funsies just to see, and it's not that bad. Uh, my head almost hits the headliner, uh, but you know, uh, you're basically in a little Ford Ranger, so you can't expect too much. Then you got two dome lights, you know, and then my headliner, I lucked out that being in that good of shape. I didn't do anything to it. Then you go in the back, you lift up on that. And then there's your uh, storage in the rear. It's really not that bad. You got, I don't know, from there to there on my arm. So from fingertip to shoulder. Uh, I don't have a tape measure. That's that's my form of measuring right now. Here's a funnel I found on the side of the road. That's a good funnel. It was free. Here's a shovel. I don't know why that's here. Um, you know, I, I've got my stuff back here. Then with these, I really like this truck because you got these little cubbies. There's one there. 
There's not one there. I don't know why. Then you got one there and one there. They're just super good. I don't want to put an umbrella and stuff in. Got some parts. Um, this is coming off. That's fine. And then, yeah. Some of these had the opening back glass like a Jeep. Mine doesn't. And then not all of these had a spare tire holder. Mine does. So you'll see some of these going down the road. Uh, with just nothing here. In my opinion, they look kind of goofy without a spare tire holder on the back. But, you know. And this isn't factory. Mine did have the factory roof rack. Not all of these had those. Uh, I put this ladder rack looking thing on here. Because, I don't know. You ain't going to do much with the factory rack. And this I can do. I could put a John boat on the top of this thing if I wanted to. So the motor in this thing is either a really good thing or a really bad thing, depending on who you ask. I personally really like the Ford 2.9. It's just a good little motor, you know? Look how, look how tiny it is. Again, I did a whole series on these. Or not these, this. Went through the whole motor. By that I mean from the heads up. Uh, painted that red, made it look cool. Uh, so the biggie on these motors is if you're looking at one, and it's just parked beside someone's house. I 90% of the time, I guarantee you, this is the issue is that these heads crack on these. Um, like nine out of ten times, they're going to be cracked. Uh, that's what mine was. So I ordered me a set from King Cylinder Heads online out of I think they're in California somewhere. Um, supposedly they're like revamped or whatever, so that way they don't crack as easily or they shouldn't crack at all. He said he's sold these since like 2008 and he's never had a set come back cracked so that either means they're really good at not cracking or no one wants to pay their shipping fee to send it back to them uh, i'm gonna say i personally have had really good luck out of these so i'm gonna say that they just don't crack and these little motors they have a bajillion little sensors which means there's a bajillion little things to go wrong uh which means you better have a jumper wire up here you know that way you can get home that's actually to uh, jump a fuel pump relay, which is that over there on the firewall, because I've had really bad luck out of those. That being said, we can go over all the things that go along with the motor, which is, uh, how's it do going down the road? Goodness, I'm trying to get behind that tree, that way the sun's not glaring. There we go. Uh, I, I, I like this motor. Uh, it's not overpowered, but it's not underpowered. It, honestly, it's perfect for this truck. Um, I can go up a hill going... 45 miles an hour in fifth gear it'll do that just fine and with how good the transmission shifts if you need fourth gear to go up a hill or third you just shift down and it doesn't fight you so like i said i drive this thing to college every weekend which means i drive this thing probably 80 miles one way so 160 miles a week uh, and 90 percent of that is on the big roads like 50 miles an hour and up um and it just it does just fine the max I'll push this thing is um, 70 miles an hour because anything past that, it just do it doesn't seem that happy. It'll do it. It just doesn't. It doesn't feel like it wants to do it. You know, uh, you're just getting the R the RPMs too much. So on the terms of miles per gallon, granted this is a five speed. That's going to help it. Um, and it's five speed. This thing doesn't weigh anything, and it's a little 2.9 V6. So it ought to be pretty good, and it is. I average, I check it every time I fill up. I average between 19 and 21 miles a gallon uh, in this thing. I've never seen it below that in the, the miles I've driven this thing. And you also got to keep in mind, it's a five-speed, and 90% of those miles are highway, so you're not stopping and going a lot. That'll do it. That'll help, that'll help that. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room, and that's the fact that uh, these things are super top heavy and that's what ultimately got them discontinued by Ford because people were just scared of them. Ford stopped making them because people were scared that they're top heavy and then they released a vehicle which was the Explorer that was just as top heavy and people bought them up and you know the Ford, the, the Ford Explorer is still around to this day so you know. So the fact is it is pretty top heavy uh, and you definitely feel it when you're driving. Um, you know like if you take a corner too fast it, it feels like you're taking it too fast. In my opinion, this thing is only as dangerous as you make it to be. So if you just drive it within its realm and with you have some sense, 
uh, you're going to be fine, I feel like. Now, if you get t one in this thing, yeah, it's probably going to go over. It's, it's just like any other vehicle from the 80s. Uh, there's no airbags. The doors are paper thin. If you get hit in, it's probably going to be pretty bad. Um, and it's just the way it is, you know. It's just one of them things where if you're going to obsess over it and say, like, oh, this thing's dangerous. If I get hit in it, I'm probably going to get hurt. You probably don't need to drive it. You just got to be aware that it could happen. You just you just hope it don't happen and you just don't worry about it. That's what I do. But yeah, the top heaviness, uh, I feel like I skimmed over that pretty fast, but it's it's really as simple as just drive it within its limits. You drive it sensible, it's probably not as top heavy as the rest of these big old trucks on the road now. Sun went behind the clouds. I'm gonna go over here real quick. So that goes back to the question of this video is if, if you should buy one of these, I guess. It's not no mean off-road machine like this like terrain right here with big old rocks like that and stuff. That's what this whole road is. I trust it. I don't think I'd take anything over that. That's literally because that's just because I have no experience anything past that whatsoever. So if you're not willing to learn a vehicle and learn its characteristics, then it's probably not for you. So for example, this thing has a little hiccup it does every once in a while. When you're driving on cold, it's just, it's idling and rough as everything, and you gotta help you gotta help it along to get those RPMs up. To uh, it almost like cough and work through it in a way. It, I hate to sound that way, but it's almost like it coughs real good and then it's good, like it's got a sore throat. If you're not willing to help your vehicle work through a sore throat every once in a while, you probably just shouldn't buy a vehicle from the '80s and daily drive it. It's just like a toddler, you know. I've never dealt with a toddler, but I've imagined that sometimes they just don't want to do anything. And this vehicle is the same way. Sometimes you just got to make it do it. And then it'll eventually do it and it'll be fine. And another biggie is if you're not willing to spend the weekend working on it, that way you can drive it to work Monday or to school Monday, you probably shouldn't buy one of these because there's going to be some weekends like that where you just have to spend all your free time working on it because it wants or needs something. I would say you need to be either mechanically inclined or willing to learn because if not, this thing is going to nickel and dime you to death. Um, for example... Uh, there's pretty big, pretty big snowstorm. I drove this thing through. I guess it was last year. Some water had somehow got through the grill and into my fuel pump relay and froze in there. And all of a sudden, I didn't have fuel pumps. Um, I knew where to look because, like I said, I've had issues with fuel pump relays before. I took it apart, and there's ice in there. If you're not willing to at least learn and dig into stuff, stuff like that, it's just gonna nickel and dime you to death. It's probably gonna be pretty expensive. But I'm I'm either stupid enough or smart enough to enjoy working on this so it's like a win-win for me i personally really like these trucks i think the looks are pretty nice it's just a good looking vehicle um i think they're not worth they're not worth a lot now which means they're pretty cheap to buy but i think that it's just got a certain look to it it's going to be worth something at some point you already see the market going up on these just because they're getting harder to find and good shape uh, i'm not saying mine's in that good of shape but it looks pretty good from over here. It's a good 10 to 15 footer. I think that these are pretty reliable vehicles once you get them to the point where they are reliable. That sounds kind of stupid, but what I mean by that is where you can drag it from beside someone's house, which is where this one's sitting, put it in the garage and put some money into it. Uh, I, they're pretty good vehicles. Uh, that being said, you are going to have to do some work on it every once in a while. That's just, that's literally any vehicle. And like I mentioned, you got to be willing to either pay someone which is going to be expensive to do that to do the work or just watch a lot of youtube videos which is what i did and you're in luck because there's not a lot of videos out there but i've literally recorded everything i've done with this truck and put it on my channel so uh, there's a good chance if there's something wrong with your truck i've covered it if you're willing to sacrifice some creature comforts on the inside for the looks on the outside, which I'm willing to do because this thing looks sick. And with the sun behind it right now and like the pretty mountains and stuff, that's, that's just a good looking sight right there. I could put me a little camping chair right here where I'm standing and stare at this all day because it's it's, that's a good looking vehicle, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you're willing to, to do that, I'd say go for it. You're probably going to like it. But yeah, this is like a completely different video from what I usually do on this channel. Uh, usually I'm working on my junk, but like right now this thing doesn't need anything. So I figured it'd be a good time to uh, make a little recap on uh, what it's like to drive this thing for 10,000 miles. And I like it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go head back to the house because, actually, I don't know. I may do that just that and just like kind of stare at, stand right here and stare at my truck for a while. 
Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do after this, to be honest. Uh, but I do know that I'm going to end this video, like, right now. So, thanks for watching.